This is it. It has been officially over a year since I have touched weed. Since I have touched the devil's lettuce. You see, the story on how I began begins a couple years ago when I went back to my home country, Thailand. I went back for the first time in a very long time, and over there, the green stuff is legal. It is very, very legal. It's also very, very cheap. It would cost 20p for like a whole pre-rolled thing. I'm not, I don't want to say like, you know, I don't, I don't want to get demonetized. But, um, you know, the green stuff was unbelievably cheap. And when I was there, I was there for two months and I kind of went through a two month binge of the green stuff every single day. I was basically high in the clouds for two months straight. Anywhere you walked, it would be there around the corner. It was everywhere. And you know, when I got back home, it continued. Not to that extreme, because it's obviously a lot harder, but when I got back home, it continued. Not every day, but you know, any time that I could. And I never ever believed that it was actually bad. It's not affecting me, it's not affecting my life. At least, I didn't think that until I tried to quit. I tried to change, I tried to quit, I tried to get onto the good habits and stop, you know, the green stuff, I tried to stop alcohol, drinking, I tried to stop all the bad habits and get onto the really good ones, you know, meditating, going to the gym, eating healthier, but it was hard, especially for my sleep. For me, you know, the green stuff, sometimes I would do it right before I went to bed because it would make me fall asleep like a, a, like a log. It helped me sleep amazingly. So when I tried to get off the stuff, the drawbacks, I couldn't sleep. And when I did fall asleep, the dreams were terrifying. Genuinely, like, terrifying. Which, so bad to the got to the point that I didn't want to sleep. Obviously, you know, I'm just talking about my experiences. Everyone has different experiences. Some people dream like crazy when they're, you know, on the stuff. Uh, for me, I never dreamed, I just kind of went straight to bed and, and woke up the next day. So when I was off it, it kind of, you know, it was very, very hard. And it makes me want to talk about how in this past year, well, it's been longer than that, but like, you know, that that sounds weird if I don't say like a year. Uh, in this past year, I want to talk about how this has been the most successful year of my life ever since qu- quitting, both like physically I'm the best I've ever been. Mentally, I am the healthiest I've ever been. YouTube is doing great. I am in a very, very good place in my life, and I definitely do think it's come down to me quitting and focusing on the good habits. The first positive thing that I noticed in the sort of change in this past year is my energy. My energy and like sort of like motivation for the day just increased exponentially. It was like a rocket. And it kind of makes sense. I wasn't so mentally dependent on the green stuff, so I had to use that to function throughout my day. Like, I couldn't get through the day without it. So the fact that I, you know, when I quit and my body started to improve and rely on itself, it kind of makes sense that my energy for the day went up a huge amount as well, because I wasn't mentally dependent on it. I wasn't using the green stuff like a crutch. Sleep. Yes, I know at first my sleep was very, very hard, but after a while, my sleep got better. I wasn't so dependent on the stuff I was doing before to fall asleep. I wasn't so dependent on the Zaza. Um, I hate calling it by that. But, you know, I wasn't so dependent on it, and my sleep did eventually get better. My body didn't need to rely on it, it could just rely on itself. And this one's kind of a sneaky one, this... This point that changed, and it was my true friends. It made me sort of when I quit, it made me sort of sit down and look at my friends that I had, you know, and a lot of the guys that I was friends with, I kind of only ever was with them when I went over to their place to smoke. That was it. So they weren't really good friends, and I could tell because when I told them that I quit, you know, and I wasn't doing it anymore, they kind of made me feel ashamed and like peer pressured to do it again i kind of sat here thought you guys really don't care about my well-being you just want a smoke buddy that's it so you know i had to sort of sit down and choose 
Alright, what friends do you want to keep in your life? The stoners, or the guys on self-improvement? And you can probably guess which I chose. I knew that I had to prioritise my mental and my physical health, and that unfortunately meant I had to cut off the people that were dragging me back into that influence. And the most important thing that I have learnt in this year, I feel more like me. I just feel like myself. I feel really, really good in my skin. You know, I'll have a super busy, productive day. I'll get home and it's like 10 p.m. I will lie down in my bed and I just sit and think, yeah, this is all I need to relax. And I'll literally grab a book, no anything in my system, no influence at all, no, no, no weed, no alcohol, just no junk food, no nothing literally lie down in bed and I'll read a book where the superior man and then I'll just go to bed and you know I feel so relaxed and you know looking back to my past a day in life when I was in Thailand to a day of my life now it is very very different but I am way way happier now you know where a day in Thailand I would I would get up at like midday and I wouldn't go outside until like 4 p.m. because it was super hot outside and then when I'd, I'd literally walk down from my apartment two minutes to the local bar and start drinking and start, you know, smoking. And that would last the whole day. And we would keep doing that until like five in the morning because it's so hot over there. Five in the morning, it was like 20 degrees. So it was so boiling hot. We could stay up until like six in the morning, just high. And then I would go home, go to bed, wake up at midday go out at 4 p.m. and repeat. Did that for a long time. Compared to my days now where I get up at 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, not p.m. 6 or 7 a.m. consistently every single day. I'll look outside my window. I'll see the sun just rising. I'll think, damn. Go downstairs, grab myself a coffee, stand outside and look at the sun in person. Come inside, meditate, journal, have a cold shower, I'll then get up and drive to work, after work, I'll then go to the gym for like two hours, I'll then go skate after the gym, I'm a freestyle skateboarder, so I'll then go skate with my friends who are also on self-improvement, and then I'll go home, and it's like 8, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., and I'll then just sit, focus on YouTube or like script or like edit I usually do that in the morning but like if I run out of time I'll then do all of that and then I'll sit down I'll read a book and I'll go to bed and I have to say I feel I feel like me I feel good I feel great and I can clearly see the progress I'm making I just kind of wanted to talk about this video because you know it's technically been a year it's been more than that it's been a lot more than that but you know it's been on my mind recently and it feels good. It feels good. I've come a long way. I've come a long way. I do hope this video helped you out. I do hope that you've, you know, learned something from this, from my experience. And there's another video that's going to pop up in the corner. You can click on it if you want. And you can subscribe as well if you want as well to see more content like this. But more importantly, stay consistent and don't give up. Alright, you know what time it is. Self-improvement kiss. Mwah.